What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we are heading to Japan for round 17 of our career mode in season 2 of F1 Manager. And if you missed last time out then you will have missed the Singapore Grand Prix. Always an interesting one Singapore throws up many an interesting result and this year really was no different. We came out in the top 10 only just behind George Russell whose tyres were pretty much flatlining by the time it got to the end of the race. Um, so we managed to pick up an extra point, which was a great result for the team and a bit of a confidence boost for everybody after a bit of a lacklustre few races, shall we say. But unfortunately for us, Williams, who are our main competitors for the top seven positions in the Constructors, did manage to get into the top five. Yuki Tsunoda taking a new engine and finding a lot of pace in that car. So with that being said, the championship now looks like this. The constructors now we have a six point gap to try and get in front of Williams. I don't think personally we're going to be able to do it. I think we're well ahead of the Hasses at this point and we're well ahead of Alpha Tauri. The confidence is there with the board. It's there. It's happy at the moment and they're delighted with what we're doing race wise. But again, we've got to keep making the races a decent result, especially in the board's eyes so that we can keep our jobs for next year. In terms of upgrades and things like that, there isn't anything that's coming in terms of upgrades on the car. Obviously, a couple more weeks have got to go by till we get to that point and one can actually start building them. Um, but again, manufacturing, that's just new components or, or components we've already got, sorry, that need a bit of a top up. So we've got four in each garage or four parts for each, uh, for each guy. So we've got spares and then we've got the underfloor and rear wing obviously being working on which we mentioned last episode so again the car analysis this is where we're currently sat we're 10th in terms of top speed cornering's pretty much rubbish but that's why the upgrades are focusing on the cornering more than the speed to try and get that boosted up because again if we can get if we can get that cornering up to around 15th and keep that top speed around 10th that'll leave us in good stead i think for the rest of the season we should be able to pick up some points whether or not it's enough to get us into the top seven again that's another question entirely. But with that being said, we're going to get into the Japanese Grand Prix. We're going to get into practice, get everything ready, and let's see how we go. So here we are then, folks. We're about to head into qualifying. And as you can see, it's been a pretty miserable and soggy weekend in Japan. So again, hard to know where we're going to be in the mix of all this. One thing I can tell you is that there is going to be a lot of penalties because a lot of people are taking new engine components. So the grid is going to be heavily mixed up. And if we can put in a decent performance, then maybe, just maybe, we might have a good starting position. And with it being a wet race as well, that might help us hold on to positions a little bit more than it we usually would do in the dry. So, with that being said, I'm going to go get the car parts ready because we need to switch these round. And then we'll get into qualifying and see how we do. So, as you can see, for qualifying, it's finished with us being in 16th and 19th. So the pace, not generally there in the car. I think the cornering is the main issue because obviously a lot of Japan's medium speed corners and that's one of the main components that the data for before the race was telling me we needed to maybe be a little bit stronger in. But again, there's going to be a lot of mix up in terms of the order. So I actually don't know where we're going to end up here. So something a bit strange here because it's saying there's moderate rain. But my telemetry is telling me that there is no rain. So, what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? I'm not entirely sure. We're just going to have to go over the telemetry and hope to God it isn't raining by the time we start this race. Otherwise, we are going to be in for a world of pain. Um, so, yeah, let's get into the race and see how we do. We're starting in 13th and 14th. Decent positions to start off with. As long as we have a good start, we might be able to jump up the grid. Who knows? But, yeah, let's see how we do. We're going to go on the aggressive strategy, try to stop a... And yeah, let's see how we go from here. So yeah, moderate rain on the telemetry there, but nothing to show for it here as a Williams is starting in second. Sonoda starting in second, so our season could get bad to worse as Bottas starting out now side by side with the McLaren and Norris at the minute and fighting with signs as well. And I'm amazed that almost free wide there that there wasn't a crash early on. And again... Decent start from the boys, keeping it clean. That's what we need as we head into this hairpin now. And hopefully we can keep the pace up and put some pressure on these guys. But with new components on a lot of these guys in terms of their engine, it might be tricky for us. 
Um, but we'll see. Took a bit of a gamble with that. Let's hope it pays off. So as you can see, heading into lap three now, and DRS has been enabled. But unfortunately for us, K-Mag has got in front of Ocon and is now battling away with Bottas. And maybe that might be due to newer engine components. Who knows? But again, I'm trying to hold off on putting new engine components until as late as possible in the season so that we don't necessarily have to put in a second round of them and basically use the remainder of our budget on new engine components because Bottas definitely needs a new engine, a new ERS, and a new gearbox. And then I think we can probably get Oc Ocon's gearbox to the end. So overall, that's probably going to cost us about 15, 16 million each, or 15, 16 million altogether, and that's half of the remaining budget left, pretty much. So again... Are we going to upgrade the car anymore before the end of the season? Probably not. I want to try and use as much time as possible and resource as possible getting the research done for next year to try and give us that better start because this season we did start a little bit better than we did at the start of the first season, but it wasn't much of a jump up and that's why it's been probably a little bit more better this year, but it's not as big a step as I want to take going into the third season. So yeah, let's see what we can do. Again, pushing on, sticking with K-Mag at the minute and with Lando. And again, we're hanging in there. Four laps down, plenty to go. And we're using ERS right now on lap five, and we've caught right back up to K-Mag. And Albon has slipped a little bit below the top ten. And the virtual safety car comes through. And I don't know what's happened. I don't know who's been... Uh, Verstappen's out. Okay. That moves Sonoda up to second place. Sonoda having the race of a lifetime here in his home Grand Prix, no less. And Verstappen at the chicane and smashes into the wall. A rare mistake from Verstappen in first place. And again, it's all about trying to conserve everything we've got now. Cool everything down and get ready for an, a second push when the race restarts. And again, that'll prolong the tyres a little bit as well by a couple of laps. So that'll help us out in the long run. And I've just realised why Albon is sinking a little bit further back on the start. He's on hard tyres. That's why. No one else has hard tyres on the grid. So, again, bit of a strange one. But, again, if we can take advantage of, of that sort of pace difference in these tyres early on, I ain't going to complain as Bottas gets in front of Albon pretty much straight away and is now chasing down Norris. And hopefully we can have a fight with this McLaren before the race is done and again doing what we need to do Bottas really earning his keep going up to 88 Bottas as well let's not forget we started on 86 with him at the start of the first season and he's gone up two points even at 34 he's still got plenty left in the tank side by side with Lando here using the ERS to try and push this but just don't have the ability in the corner to hold the position. But again, we're going to be on DRS again and be able to make another push. We've run out of VRS. But hopefully we can make this move as we go side by side with him now. Oh, it's going to be tight. But Lando just holds on. But again, fantastic opening nine laps from Bottas and Ocon holding, holding the place right now. And we'll see where we end up in a few laps time. So we're up to lap 10 now, and K-Mag is right on our tails. Norris and Signs have drifted away. Probably for the fact that Norris is clinging on to Signs' back end with the DRS is probably helping him out quite a lot. And we're starting to burn through the tyre performance a little bit now. Um, but everyone else is on pretty similar performance in terms of the soft, so there shouldn't be too much of a difference by the time we come in. I think we probably get five more laps on these tyres, and then we'll pit. And then we'll be able to go on the mediums and do a bit of a longer stint on the mediums and get ready for that last soft stint and hopefully be able to make up some places on a better tyre but again Albon dropping away Ocon down to 15 for sure making his way through the pack now isn't really a surprise but again we're doing okay I think top 12 I'd be happy with um, again something else I think has to happen with the top 10 for us to go any higher um, but yeah we'll see where we're at we've got decent performance in the car so let's keep pushing in and see if we can make up some more time on, on K-Mag so we've managed to go a couple extra laps, keeping Joe behind us. But as you can see, he's right on our tail now. And I'd expect him to probably get in front of us in the next couple of laps. But 
But again, keeping a relatively stable time behind K-Mag. He's not pulling over two seconds. It's around a second and a half. And again, if we can keep that around the same by the time the pit stops start to happen, then hopefully we'll, we'll be in a good position heading into that medium stint. And on the other side of the garage, we've got Ocon, who's on the back of Albon's car now. He's on softs, of course, but Albon's still on the hard tyres. Using the ERS and DRS now to try and get in front of him, and we've made up that place. Ocon's a couple of seconds behind Joe and his teammate, but again, that's sort of been the pattern for the majority of the season, really. Um, and yeah, starting to question whether I should have given Ocon that contract. But hopefully with a hopefully with an improve, improvement in the car and maybe an improvement in facilities next year, we'll start to see the best out of the Frenchman. Um, because I know there's a good driver in there. We've just got to try and find a package that helps him unlock that potential. So Bottas is up to a, is still in eleventh. I was about to say up to eleventh. He's caught right back up to K Mag. Um, K Mag seems to have drifted away from signs. Although saying that Hamilton's actually coming for a pit, that's why we're up to eleventh. Got a bit confused there. I was in the middle of doing the, the pit strategy and that's why I've lost my equilibrium a little bit. But we're bringing Bottas in now for a pit stop. So if we can hang on to the back of Magnussen and then let if Magnussen either comes in, we might be able to jump him in the pit stops or you know something else might happen. But Hamilton's come in for a fresh pair of softs. So again, two-stop strategy seems to be the way for the majority of people unless your name's Alex Albon and you might be doing one stop. As we come in now for our pit stop, Alonso also in. Alonso going on to softs. And we get onto the mediums. A little bit of a longer pit stop there, but again, it's only 2.10, so it's not too much of a worry. And we'll come out behind Hamilton. And again, we've just got to get ourselves going again and ready. On to the next stint. So Ocon's in the pits now. Piastri also in. Goes on to the mediums, Ocon, in and out in 2.3. That's a good pit stop. Piastri having some problems with his. But yeah, and Piastri's on the softs, we're on the mediums. Which I'm hoping is a good sign of things to come. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of soft, spare soft tyres, of course, with it being a, wet, a rather wet weekend. And yeah, we're just hoping we can uh, make the use of this tyre as much as we can. But again, it's about getting up the boys up to speed and seeing where they go from there. Um, and there'll be some other guys coming in for pits soon, I would imagine. You've got the likes of Ricardo on lower mediums now, De Vries on his softs, Albon on used hards. So, yeah, if we can start closing the gap on these guys above us, um, not necessarily, obviously, the guys you've just pitted, but the guys in this sort of mid-pack, then maybe we'll be in a good spot come the next end of this stint. So De Vries and Joe are now coming into the pits, soft to soft again. De Vries going from soft onto soft again so again quicker tires at the moment for these guys you've just pitted but again if we can hold on to this tire and put in some decent lap times when we get onto that second stint of softs we should be in a good position to make some overtakes i think so ricardo albon's coming in for a pit that's interesting okay he's been held up though by the pit stop so that lets us jump him k mags onto new softs now Ricardo onto new softs. Everybody going on to, to new softs at the minute. I'm, it's bizarre that Albon's went on hard tyres, though. That seems to be a bit of a mismanagement on his side of the garage. But again, I'm not exactly complaining because it's moved us to top 10, although we are pretty much sitting ducks in some of those newer, newer softer tyres wearers. But their tyres are obviously going to wear out a lot quicker than ours. So hopefully we can use that to our advantage in a few laps' time. And we've just been overtaken by Leclerc. After jumping up above Hulkenberg in the pit stops. And Hulkenberg's gone on to new softs as well. So yeah, a couple of uh, soft strategies to start the race. It'll be interesting to see what the third stint is though. Because, again, they're going to have to come in. The, if they those guys have done two softs, they're going to have to either go to medium or hards. And I would assume it would be medium. But yeah, that might leave us with some opportunities to overtake at the end. Um, so yes, whilst we might be dropping down a little bit of time to these guys who do obviously have much quicker cars, it might start to come back to us in the next 10 laps or so. And Albon's weekend is getting from bad to worse, starting in a decent position. And he's spun out, heading into turn 11 and chasing down a couple of hasses. He's uh, made a bit of a mistake there. And yeah, he's dropped to the back of the pack. So Albon, who was in our consideration, has a bit of concern. 
stays at the bottom, but Sonoda is holding his ground here and he's in top three at the moment and could be on for a race win if he plays his cards right. So Sainz makes the pass on us now in lap 25, but again, not too concerned by it because, again, they're all on soft tyres, so they should be making up that pace. The fact we've kept within touch of these guys, again, it's only about five or so seconds between us and Leclerc in eighth, um, you know, I think is a positive sign that when these soft tyres start to degrade a little bit and we have a bit more performance than that medium, then hopefully we should be able to hang on and maybe make up some time again on these guys. But again, we've got to try and hang around with them as long as we can because if we just let them drift away, we, we will be left out in the rain a little bit. So yeah, 28 laps or so to go. Positive signs for sure. As K-Mag makes his pass now, Hulkenberg also making a pass on us. So the Haas is getting the early overtakes done. But again, we hold on to DRS. And again, if we can just stick around with K-Mag here, then we might be in a decent position. And that's what we've got to try and do now. So up to lap 27, and unfortunately, Magnussen's got a bit of a nice tidy gap of about two seconds over us. We're keeping that gap relatively stable, though, between us and De Vries. And again, not pushing too hard on the tyre to keep him and preserve that performance. Hamilton's already down to 50% on his tyres. So I'd expect him to start get overtaken by some of this chasing pack. And then when he, when he pits, that's when I expect us to sort of start making up some places or start maybe catching up with some of these guys on the softs um, as the as the stints go on. But there's a yellow flag. There's a yellow flag. Perez spinning out on turn 11. But again, doesn't bring him anywhere near us, really. But again, Sonoda, three seconds behind Stroll, holding on to that position pretty well. It's going to take something pretty pretty bad luck-wise for Sonoda to fall out, I think, of, the, of those positions. Because he's got a good gap over the guys in front. And Norris now into the top four. So this this grid really is starting to mix up as we're getting into towards the end of Season 2. So we've opened up the time between ourselves and De Vries to about two and a half seconds, keeping Bottas in 13 for now. Hamilton's starting to drop down the pecking order a little bit because his his uh, soft tyres are on 40%. So starting to see raindrops on the track, but that that wasn't there on telemetry. We saw we looked at it before. There was no there was no rain on there. Oh great! Right, well. Okay then, well that makes it more interesting. We'll have to see if that changes. But again, we've got a couple of laps here to try and make up some time on some of these soft tyre guys um, and see what we can do in these conditions. But it's going to be about 20 laps or so in the rain. And there's rain really till the end. So I think it's going to be intermediates when the time comes to pit. So the heavier rain's coming in in the next few minutes. And that's when I expect pit stops to have to happen. But again, we'll have to see how long that period is um, for, for that rain. Because again, we've still got about 0 0.4 millimetres to go before we start to think about intermediates. And it's only really trickling down now. But if the rain is heavy enough, then obviously we'll make the pit. But again, Hamilton's sinking without a trace here. And K-Mag looking like he might be in a good position for points. And Hamilton's on 27% tyres. So yeah, I expect K-Mag to make up those t that time pretty quickly, to be honest. So people are coming in for pits now, and I would assume that's going to be on to intermediates. Yes, they are. They are making the pits now. And again, I think we need to just to stay the course a little bit and probably... Oh, it's coming up now. So we will be coming in for pit stops. Now, I think. I think that's the time to do it. Because the rain is coming down and it's going to bring it up. We've still got half a lap, so we might lose a bit of time to those intermediate guys. But again, not a lot of people coming out onto intermediates. And Sonoda's tumbled down to fifth. That's really unfortunate for the Williams crew. He was looking good, but I think the rain's just come at the wrong time. Hamilton is going to be a major benefactor of the pits coming in now. And again... We need to try and be as quick as we can with this pit stop for both Valtteri and for Ocon. 
Because we could be bottom of the pack here if we're not careful. Alonso's locked up on turn 15 as well. We get out in front of a couple of cars there. I don't know who it was. But lap 37. And we stay as we are pretty much. Yeah. Not a lot changed there. So five seconds of the gap between us and K-Mag now. We've got to get ourselves down this road and see if we can catch up to the Haases. So we've got 15 laps to go. And unfortunately for us, it looks like trying to hold position in 13th over Hulkenberg is going to be the main task of the day. It's not looking like it's going to come very easy though because we are drifting away from K-Mag. And that Haas is picking up some real pace in the rain. And yeah, it's... Um, it's going to be a struggle, I think, because I think the other cars just seem to be a lot quicker. We're keeping knock on just about ahead of Ricardo, But again, it's going to be a long battle between now and the end of the race. Still got about 13, 14 laps to go. And yeah, we could start sinking down this grid without a trace, really. And there's been a yellow flag, and it's that guy, Sonoda. He's been having a phenomenal couple of races, and he's dropped down to 12th. So K-Mag moves up to 11th. And he's only a few tenths behind Joe as well. So points very, very well be on the board for the Haas cars. And now we're chasing down a from a potential race winner to now being out the points. Very unlucky for Sonoda, really. So with 10 laps to go, the gap remains about 2.2 seconds between ourselves and Sonoda. No real damage on Sonoda's tyres, unfortunately. Otherwise, I think that might help us try and gain that bit of time. We're just trying to preserve... About half a second to a second's gap on Hulkenberg when we're cooling everything down and recharging the ERS. And then going for a push again to try and either open up that gap or try and, you know, get a bit closer to the guys ahead of us. But I think if we manage to hold on to 13th, that's probably the best we could hope for in the, in the given circumstances. And yeah, those upgrades really can't come soon enough for us, I don't think. So with about eight laps or so to go... We've been able to open up that gap to about two seconds over Hulkenberg. And K-Mag's now dropped to about 2.7 seconds behind Joe. So thankfully for us, there isn't going to be Haas picking up extra points today. But again, Haas have made a bit of a jump from where they've been over the past couple of races. So maybe they've had upgrades to come on the car. Obviously, we know we've got hours to come as well at some point. But is it going to be enough to to make a big jump and make us consistent points totals. I don't know, but again, Sonoda was looking like he was going to seal seven for Williams in the championship. And this might just have saved our bacon for the rest of the season. And we've just got to hope these upgrades bring enough pace to the car that it gets us at least consistently in the top 10, um, whether that's 10th or 9th to at least make up or get us at least on even par with the Williams because that Williams being in the top two for the majority of the race was a scary thing to look at. So there's about five laps to go and the track, the track, the track, the track is starting to dry up a bit. But as you can see in telemetry in the top right hand corner, it is getting towards a heavier stint of rain. So with that being said, we're going to stay out on these tyres. I don't think it's going to be worth the risk of going on to softs for, for four or five laps. But again, that gap between ourselves and Hulkenberg is down to about a second. De Vries has caught up to Hulkenberg as well. So let's see what we can do with a couple of laps pushing on the ERS and see if we can open up that gap back up. So as you can see, the heavy rain has really boosted up the dampness on the track by a whole millimetre. And again, we've made up a bit of time going on the attack over Hulkenberg. De Vries has dropped back a little bit as well. So with a few laps to go, I'm feeling a bit more hopeful that we're actually going to catch up. Um, or not catch up to Sonoda, sorry. We're actually going to maintain this lead over Hulkenberg with three laps to go. Let's see what we can do with one last push once the tyres have cooled down a bit. And unfortunately for us, with a couple of laps to go, K-Mag has made the overtake on Joe. And he's now running in the points position. So now we're looking at Joe to maybe make some sort of last da mad dash in the last couple of laps to get back in front of K-Mag. And again, we've opened up the gap to Sonoda, um, um, to Hulkenberg, sorry, to about almost three seconds. We're going on the attack on this last lap to try and close down the time between ourselves and the Japanese driver. Um, and we'll keep our eyes on Joe now to see if he can make some sort of overtake. Looking for a favour from our old... Our old buddy who used to drive for us in the first season. 
Is he going to have the pace to overtake the hassle? That's the question. I don't think he will personally. But again, we've kept that gap open between ourselves. We've really opened it up now to about four seconds between us and Hulkenberg with Bottas. But Joe has, hasn't quite got the pace, I don't think, to keep up with this Haas. And yeah, worrying signs if Haas are going to start picking up points now. And Lance Stroll is a race winner. It's a victory for Stroll. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Lance Stroll has been threatening with a few podiums throughout the season. Aston Martin have taken a step up. And Lance Stroll gets that first win under his belt. And Joe, unfortunately for us, isn't going to make up that final points position. And Haas are going to come away with a point. So there you go then, confirmation of the results, Lance Stroll finishing first, Lando having a great race, jumping up 10 positions in that McLaren, Charles finishing top three, and again, Sergio finishing top four will close down the gap a little bit to Max, but not by much I don't think, and then you've got k bag finishing the top 10 for us, and we finishing 13th and 16th for the drivers, it cuts the gap down to about, I think 67 points if I've got my maths right, between Sergio and Max, so plenty of points there still to play for and again Valtteri staying in 13th three points behind Sonoda constructors wise McLaren make a big jump and a pretty much solidified six there I think I think w the way it was looking though Williams looked like they might have jumped over McLaren so again uh, a big jump there for McLaren has picked up an extra point and remain eight points behind us in terms of fastest pit stops we were second F great, excellent effort from the boys and girls in the pit stop uh, team to get us that 2.3 pit stop time. And it jumps us above Alpine. And we go up to fifth. So yeah, good times all around. And yeah, maybe not the result we wanted. But I think if we'd had that, it's just a shame we had the rain at the end. Because if, if we didn't have the rain at the end, we probably would have been a lot closer to the top 10 with that soft stint. But it wasn't to be. So there you have it then, guys. That was the episode for today. We head to the next weekend in Qatar where we will have a sprint weekend. Hopefully not as memorable as the last sprint weekend we had in Qatar where both of our drivers crashed out. And I believe it was like Ocon's second race or something like that when he came in. So, yeah, hopefully we don't have a repeat of those dramatics because we probably can't really afford it. So, yeah. Let's see how we do in Qatar. As always, if you've enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We're halfway there to the 800 mark. We're close to 750 now. So any support you can give would be greatly appreciated. And yeah, let's keep pushing and see how we do in Qatar. The upgrades will be ready. Not in time for Qatar, but should be in time for the race after that. Um, they will be designed in time for Qatar. They just won't be manufactured by then. So... Yeah, might be a similar component again um, in terms of how we look for this race, in terms of how we looked in Japan. But with upgrades coming, hopefully our pace will pick up. So yeah, I'll see you in Qatar and I'll see you soon.